um, prepared for this cold snap. We got this huge wave of Arctic air coming across um, for having stuff to do inside. And what I'm looking at here is everything I need to make that. And that. And that. So I'm making some heavier jigs. These are three quarter ounce um, football heads. And it's got the little, let me see if I can, I think I've already thrown tied up all the three quarter but this is a uh, half i'm working i've moved on to the halves it's got the little plastic keeper there and uh <clears throat> the do it mold <clears throat> that i chose you know has the the um the line tie kind of into the head there which kind of i think protects the knot a little bit got a decent collar there and then this is a victory hook. I like these. Um, they're similar to like the old Matsuo sickle hooks, except the Matsuo sickle hooks, I felt like they did not, they missed fish because that hook point was turned in. This one is, you know, is straight out and it meets where the bristle guard, I got a little cavity right there, ready for the bristle guard. Um, <clears throat> You know, I've selected these and I've not had them in the water. I'll do that on Monday. Kevin Hall Ash has taken me out on uh, either Liberty or Pretty Boy, I'm not sure which. Anyhow, I have a bunch of these already tied up, ready in three quarter ounce. I've moved on to half, three eighth, quarter. These quarters I'll probably have on the, <clears throat> try these on the river. If it doesn't freeze over. What I wanted to talk about as I tie some of these up is diversity of motion. And really, I'm gonna have to grab a soft plastic over here to, <coughs> to complete what I have, which is four different things in motion. You got your regular skirt material and I'm using a third of a tab. Everything I put on there is sparse. You can see that in there. Um, I got round rubber. I just use two strands. These are my antenna. Everything that I that I have is kind of representative of some part of it. So legs, antenna, the body. That's a bucktail. I got a green one and a black one. That's basically what I tie is green and black. And then the um, the claws. And I actually trimmed that helicross. Mm, that, you know, the bat wings is already kind of compact, even though that's a big one. So four different things in motion. None of them really overpowering. All of them work together to create what is essentially, you know, different different parts of a craw, all doing their own thing, such that when that thing's sitting still on bottom, the whole thing's in motion, especially when a fish's body pushes up onto it and checks it out. Everything is wiggling and jiggling and shaking and trembling and saying, I'm alive. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie one up. You can see, see all that come together. All right, that's what I'm gonna end with. I just tied that one, I'm gonna set him up here. Um, <clears throat> so start with the head like that. Got the bobbin. Here come the comments about a vice. No, just no. The vice only slows me down. All right, so wrap a couple times around there. Set that down. Get a little pinch of <clears throat> of hair. I don't need a big tuft of it. This is just 
sort of suggestive and representative. It doesn't have to make up the entire body. It represents the body, but it's just suggest suggestive. All right, so I take a pinch. All right, that's all I got. That's all I need. I'm gonna turn them over kind of upside down. And lay the cut side over the, you know, over the collar just so it goes far enough. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And um, <clears throat> I know my fingers are in the way, but I gave it a couple, eh, I'm, I guess I gave it three turns there. So at this point, it's all on the bottom, right? And the concept of the harder you, you tug on this, the more it flares, uh, tug too hard, it flares out. I was trying to show off for you. All right, I'll get that back going again. I don't usually tug on it that hard, but it's doing what I wanted it to do anyways, which is to to really spread out those hairs. And usually I tug on it hard later. Um, I'm gonna kind of mash the hair around so it goes all the way around the sides at this point I can flip it over Let's see yep I need it here I'm just kind of working it all the way around <clears throat> the thicker the kind of base layer of <clears throat> of thread the first I don't know what did I go around it 15 times the more threads you have there the more when you pull on it the more it can really go from this to this and I'm gonna trim this I'm telling you I'm not really concerned with trimming this exact I actually like some of those random hairs kind of sticking around the head because I will put scent on this and these these not trimmed so great hairs are going to hold on to that scent doesn't bother me if you want to you can get really neat with it take a razor blade trim that I'm not going to do it so I've taken the skirt material the tabs this is what I start with that's a whole piece. I'm just pinching that off into three three sections. So I take a third, a third, a third, and I just kind of lay that. Um, and then it, I'm kind of doing quarters. A quarter of the length kind of drapes over one side of the head, kicked out the side. Then I make a loop and I draw it back in. So basically the length of it they're all going out in four different directions. These are my legs. Crawl legs. I'm going to just show you. Out to the side, out to the side, and then there's a loop under the body that I'm going to I'm going to cut when it's done. Okay? See that loop? I will cut it in the middle. So, it's not a long skirt. It's a short, short one kind of going all out in four different directions. <clears throat> I'm taking the, um, this is round rubber. Get as much length as I can, and you can see that I have half of it there, or not half, but I'm pulling that down so I get the long part as long as I can. I'm just kind of stretching that. Get a couple more turns. All right, do a half hitch. Diversity 
of motion. Doesn't matter what subtle little movements and currents are going on from that, that fish that comes up and sniffs at this bait. Something's always moving. It's a lot moving outside with the wind. So putting the flyhead cement on there just to seal up the uh, threads there. We got some noises of things. I don't even know what. We got like 50 mile an hour wind today. Alright, I'm trimming that. <clears throat> I'm taking these, trimming that, which kind of opens up the, the ends of those legs to do whatever they need to do. Lots of wiggling. I'm gonna get this loop of these guys. I'm careful not to cut the hair. I don't want to cut that hair. There, that kind of goes in all directions. And then I take my antenna, and there's there's two of them together, and I'm splitting them. Two antenna. What's left? Two things. One is a bristle guard. Right. And my buddy Alan Ragland taught me to for those inserts to stop using the the metal insert and use the these little Teflon rods. And that makes it so it goes in there real good. Powder paint doesn't get in there. And the Teflon's easier to to get off of there. So got the Gorilla Glue ready. Just put a little dab in there. Just I like the gel. The gel is good. Put a little nub and then just kind of squish that thing in there. I will eventually take the, the bristle guard. And that, that one's basically done. I'm going to let it set it over here. Um, so <clears throat> I will eventually take the bristle guard once I get a trailer on there and get this ready to tie on, but I will split them apart you bend them down it's an FG 30 and it really spreads it out so that you know when it's kind of if there's brush brush pile down there and it you know the football head comes over but it could roll on its side that that flared out of the the bristle guard is going to keep this and it is a sticky hook keep it where it needs to be until I decide to cross their eyes and bring in a you know, six pound, three ounce Pretty Boy Reservoir smallmouth with it. Let's see if that doesn't happen on Monday. That'd be fun. Last thing, you put the trailer on. I'm not gonna mess with that. I already did it with this one. But that's the concept. Diversity of motion. Hair, silicone, round rubber, and trailer. Four different things representing four different parts of the animal it's supposed to represent, the crayfish. And um, some of them are buoyant. The hair certainly has that hollow core that just, it lifts up and it has its own motion. Round rubber has incredible motion. Not that the silicone doesn't. Silicone is a little stiffer, moves like the legs should. And then the trailer, well, that's up to you. You gotta pick the right, right one for, you know, what you want it to look like. And I love the Elaztec. The Elaztec is buoyant. All of it lifts up and does floppy.
crayfish claw things. Anyhow, that's my football jig. Hope you uh, learned something. Hope you get into tackle crafting. There's a whole lot more on this channel in the tackle crafting where I go step by step on pouring these heads with the do it molds and powder paint and everything else. I uh, just thought I'd give you a little glimpse of tying them up and selecting the right um, right materials for diversity of motion. See ya.